Perspective is everything. I got naturalized in 1988. My first presidential election was 1988. Something that very few people know because everybody knows me as that left wing, very left liberal, actually not liberal, but progressive, left wing progressive. But my first vote in a presidential election in the United States came in 1988 and it was for G George Herbert Walker Bush. Now, I don't think it's too early uh, after his death and burial to come out and give these this particular story. But perspective is everything. Perspective is absolutely everything. I don't doubt a whole lot of the kudos that President uh, George Herbert Walker Bush got, how he treated uh, a set of people very nicely, how he, uh, during the Cold War, he didn't over-dramatize the demise of the Soviet Union, which would have probably created some issues, how he al also um, in, you know, passed the, the, uh, some good environmental laws, how he also passed, or rather signed the bill for the disabled. Good things. But again, perspective is everything. I'm originally from Central America, Panama. Uh, we had a dictator. Some liked him, some hated him. Uh, the United States crippled Panama. Panama, whose Balboa is indexed to the United States dollar, which means the dollar is, um, freak I is the currency in Panama because, again, the Balboa is indexed to it. They crippled the economy because they wanted Noriega. So people suffered like hell before the invasion as they crippled the economy by holding back dollars and only paying Americans in, uh, that lived in, in, in Panama. But of course, the ingenuity of Panamanians turned a whole lot of stuff into money to survive. But that wasn't enough to get Noriega overthrown. And why did they want Noriega overthrown? Because he was no longer going to be the CIA stooge that he was under George Herbert Walker Bush. As you know, he worked for George Bush for a long time, for the United States for a long time. Interestingly, when they needed, w when he didn't abide, he became a capitalist. America has always had a drug problem. And just like wherever there's demand, supply would show up. He was l the launderer of the monies for the supply for the American drug trade. So they wanted him. But there are two ways that this problem could have been solved, right? One could have solved the problem by eradicating the drug problem in the United States of America and kept it a United States issue which would have dried up anything trying to come into the United States. Or we could decide to use the military industrial complex, a money maker, to create a war. And in the process, under the pretext to arrest one man, the pretext to arrest one man, according to the United States, during the invasion of Panama, 500 people got killed. According to the UN, 3,000 people got killed. Many knowledgeable people of the places that got bombed, 10,000 people likely got killed. To get Noriega, one man, arrested, who lived in basic luxury in Miami, or wherever they placed him in jail, wherever they had him in jail, but several Panamanians dead, stealth fighters, used or I guess tested on Quince Pisos in, pa in Colon, that's the city I'm from, some of them to see that burning. Um, so when, when, you l when you take a look from a, when you look at things from a different perspective, it doesn't quite look the same. And we have a tendency in this country to look at things from one point of view. One of the things that I think uh, would help us quite a bit if we started on every particular issue looking from several points of view. 
I remember during the invasion 1989, I had come back from Panama in 1988. Everything was great, except for the economy was in shambles because, but I was home, but it came in shambles because of what was done with the dollar. I remember not being able to talk to my father for days after the invasion, not knowing what's going on. The Cuartel Nacional, the place that they blew up in Colón, town that I'm from, is no more than three miles or so across the sort of a inlet from, rain from Rainbow City, Arcoiris, the place that I'm from. And <laughs> I remember my father telling me after uh, we were able in, uh, to get in touch about the helicopters flying over his building, opening up with missiles heading to the cuartel, and him running around his house like a chicken running under the bed and so forth. That was real. That was real to capture one man. Many Panamanians died. And guess what Colin Powell called all those dead people? Collateral damage. Collateral damage. So when we are looking throughout not only the United States or the world, we should always have perspective. And remember, as we praise this guy for the good things that he has done in the United States under what many many people who don't know of the externalities perceive, remember there's also another side of the story, and that other side of the story was seen by many. Yes, there were many Panamanians who wanted Noriega gone, mostly those in power, those that, those Panamanians who run the Panamanian plutocracy, they loved it because this guy, this capitalist, Senor Noriega, was going to be out of the country. And then the Arnulfos and all the other, uh, the other presidents that formed a part of the whole Latin American group, same guys that are bringing down Venezuela and all these other places to make Americans believe that, oh my God, look at what has happened, not realizing what the real story is. There are two sides or several sides to every story. So may George Herbert Walker Bush lie in peace. Um, it is not a good thing to speak evil of the dead, yes, is what they say. But I think folks should hear all perspectives and understand what many, many have gone through because of our policies. And there's a whole lot of death, unnecessary death behind them. <laughs>